the fifth meditation, I thirst. After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said, in order to fulfill the scripture, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there, so they put a sponge full of the wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. As we imagine ourselves into this place, as we sit here today at the foot of the cross, knowing that Jesus at this point has lost much blood, has been in the heat of the day, and is experiencing deep, deep thirst. Can we ourselves pause with this physical, incarnational experience and join Jesus in the holy discomfort of this time and of this place? Can we not only see his thirst in our imaginations, but can we feel it to the very depths of our beings? Can we feel the dryness and the sharpness of pot shards stuck in our throat? Can we feel the dryness of desert heat? Can we feel the vulnerability that thirst so urgently awakens in us? Do you see Jesus' thirst? but even more, can you feel it? The experience of Jesus' thirst was not new to him. Not only that physical experience, living in a land where water was never taken for granted, but was seen each day as a sacred gift. But can you see, too, the thirst of Jesus to fulfill the work that God had called him to do? When he walked into the temple at the start of his ministry and he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor, release to the captive, recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free. It is these things for which Jesus deeply, deeply thirsted. And it is these very things that Jesus sought to create, to enact, to bring into being in the world that brought him to the cross. Not only bringing him to the cross, but giving him the courage and the determination to stay there. In the thirst, in the thirst for justice, for compassion, for the end of oppression, in the thirst for the flow of love to flow so freely between all brothers and sisters that all may come to abundant life. Because thirst is the key, my friends, to abundant life life. Thirst is the footpath to that great Paschal mystery that we celebrate these days, the suffering, the death, the resurrection of Jesus. Paschal life, resurrection life does not come without thirst. And so perhaps in these moments today, we can pause to notice that for which we thirst in our own personal lives and in the lives of our neighbors. Knowing that while we can die of thirst, we can also die when we do not thirst. How do we thirst for those around us? How do we thirst for those in our communities who are experiencing oppression, 
loneliness, hunger, lack of work, lack of health care, lack of opportunity, who are experiencing illness, death of a loved one. When we do not thirst, our souls, our lives become numb. We become disconnected, we dry up, and we have lost that abundant life, that living water to which Christ invites us. I invite us in this time, in this moment, in this sacred spot, to notice your thirst, to lean into your thirst, that you may know and be one with the sacred, holy thirst of Jesus. Amen.